This is my entry for the 2019 Hackaday Prize. It's an aleatoric drum machine, which means it uses random numbers to generate drum beats, and it sounds a bit like this. So the problem that I'm trying to solve with this project is that a lot of the time when you see a band play live or a musician play live using a drum machine, uh, it's kind of static. Like you'll hit the start button and then the uh, drum loop will just go round and round. Or if you're using a laptop, you just hit the space bar and then it starts to kind of play through a preset backing track. Um, I didn't really like either of those approaches, so I wanted to create a standalone instrument that was more expressive and a bit more dynamic and that you could kind of play live in a setting where you're actually reacting to what the rest of the band is doing um, rather than just having a backing track. Uh, so what I've created here is a portable low-cost drum machine. Uh, it runs off three AA batteries and uh, the chip inside it is an AT Mega 328, uh, the same as you'd find in an Arduino Uno. Uh, my inspiration for this originally was that my band wanted to play with a drum machine live, and so we you know, wanted to create this kind of expressive drum machine. Um, we originally did it with an iPad, but then I decided that I wanted to uh, create my own standalone version uh, instead. So that's where this has come from. Here's a demonstration of the different functions of DrumKit and how it works. So, first of all, we plug in a 3.5mm cable here to the headphone or line output uh, and then we turn it on here. The lights flash briefly so you know it's on and then it's instantly ready to use. Uh, we set the volume up here with this knob uh, and then we start a basic beat by pressing the start stop button. The LEDs flash in time to the music so that you know where you are within the bar. Then you've got these different knobs here which control the random aspect of the beat. So as we turn this knob up, we start to get an increasing number of random drum hits. And this knob here uh, alters how small the sort of subdivision in time is of, the, uh, of those random drum hits. They can go really fast. Or back down to slow again. Uh, you've also got control over the velocity of those drum hits and the range of those velocities. So 
So that's all in bank A. If we move to bank B, we can get some different effects. Um, so we can change the pitch of the samples. Going down slow here. And then we're actually going to reverse if we turn it here. We've got a bit crush effect. Reduces the uh, bit depth of the uh, output. So you get a sort of retro digital distortion effect. And there's also a clip sort of chop effect where you can uh, make a kind of staccato version of the samples by cutting the end off them. And then there's this glitch effect where it just kind of messes up the signal. Then in the next bank we've got um, a random quantize function so you can make the whole thing feel a little bit looser kind of adds a random delay to each step of the beat. We've got a shuffle function. All of these can be adjusted from really slight up to really extreme. Uh, and then there's also a delay function here. Moving on, we've got uh, the ability to actually change the basic drum beat that, that's underneath everything. Then we've also got tempo, which can be controlled via this knob or it can be controlled via tap uh, tempo, so like this. So you've got a choice there. Then you can also uh, change the number of beats in the bar. And the final bank uh, is all to do with a drone that's being generated uh, by the drum machine. So you can either have the raw drone fed in like this, either with just one note, or as a fifth, and then you can change the pitch. And as well as having the raw drone, you can modulate the drum beat with the drone. Create a sort of robotic feel. And then we can also load and save drum beats. So uh, this drum beat that we've got at the moment, let's just save that in the final slot. So we press these two buttons together to save, and then we pick a slot like that. Um, so let's, now we can load a previous drum beat. We'll go back to our drum beat that we just had. And those will still be there once you've turned the unit off. So let's just try bringing all of these uh, functions together in one beat.
here's a little run through of the development process for DrumKid. Um, this is my breadboard setup, which has got an Arduino Uno, uh, a breadboard, and a selection of knobs and buttons, uh, and an amplifier circuit here. Uh, and that pretty much mirrors the, um, the current sort of final design. Um, we've got a, a headphone output just here. Um, this has been changing as I've gone along, so at one point it had, I think, uh, just one knob, and then it moved up to three knobs, and then finally four. Um, so, yeah, I've been gradually changing the breadboard as I've gone along, and uh, it's really easy to program the Arduino, so I've just been, uh, as I've been developing the code, this is, this is how I test it. Uh, but I've also done quite a few iterations of the circuit board. So... This is the first and second versions of the circuit board. Um, this one had a couple of errors on it, which, uh, such as using the wrong layout for the buttons and things. Um, so that wasn't really very usable. Uh, this one was a sort of slight improvement. Um, these were designed for this 3D printed case, which I made. Um, so I was really happy with this when it came out of the 3D printer, but it took about half a day to print and the finish, I don't know if you can see here, is not very good. Uh, I mean, it looks kind of cool and, you know, it was, it was good for getting a feel for the instrument, um, but it, you know, convinced me that 3D printing wasn't actually the way to go. Uh, it wasn't going to be very scalable. Um, so instead I moved on to this kind of, uh, what's ended up being the final design. So it's a kind of open-sided, um, really simplistic, minimal design. So you've just kind of got um, one circuit board at the top, um, and then a laser cut part on the bottom, it's currently plastic, um, and then another laser cut part on the top, just here, uh, and then you've got the components inside, so this part up here is just covering up the, uh, the leads of the components and the solder underneath, um, you've got the battery compartments in there and things, um, so it's a slightly unusual design where um, you've got the sort of interactive components on the top, the buttons and knobs and things, uh, and then you've got the actual components and things underneath here, uh, and that enables me to just use one circuit board and actually have that as sort of part of the case itself. Um, you can also see here that we've got uh, hackable connections, if we can get that in focus. Yeah, so these are sort of um, the, basically the Arduino pins, but kind of repeated on either side, uh, so that you can connect up uh, other things, like you can connect up your own MIDI input or output to this, you could connect up things to the 5 volts or the ground, or you can connect up extra analog inputs, that sort of thing. Uh, so I thought it would be good to include those so that uh, people can modify this if they want to. Um, this was the... Uh, first version of this design here, but it had a routing error, uh, so I did uh, a very similar but sort of uh, fixed version here. So this is the fourth version of the PCB, and for now it's the final version, uh, and that's all working uh, really nicely now. Um, so as things stand, this is my working prototype. I'm going to try and make uh, a few more of these, uh, distribute them to some musician friends, and just get some feedback on the design. There may be one more iteration of the PCB, but there may not be. Um, so, yeah, as it, th as it stands, everything is working great, and I'm really happy with the design. So I think the only thing left to say is that if you want your own version of DrumKid, uh, they should be on sale November, December this year, 2019. Uh, or if you'd like to have a go at making your own, uh, the whole project is completely open source. So check out the links in the description uh, to either look at the Hackaday project or the GitHub repo, uh, where all of the schematics and PCB designs and all of that stuff uh, are available um, you can make your own using just a breadboard, or you can go ahead and make one similar to uh, the one that I've made. It's up to you, so go and check out the Hackaday project page, etc. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video.